Blessed be our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that, which, for that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. 
Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 22 by full verse. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my, oh my God, God, I, I cried cry in the daytime, time, but, but you do not answer. My night is well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our, Our fathers put their trust in you. They trusted in you and you delivered them. them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But, but as for me, I am a worm and no man, man sworn by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let, Let him deliver him. him. Let, Let him rescue him. him. Give he the Lord to him. him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I, I have been trusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God, when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young wolves encircle me, strong wolves of fashion surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are about my joy. My, my heart within my, my breast is all to pass. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. As the dogs close in and, and gangs of the doors circle around me, they pierce my hands. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of the wild wolves. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you have feared him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All who leave are Jacob's line, give the Lord. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. I praise the Son in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All, All the ends of, of the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. And, and all the families of the nation shall bow down before him. For 
kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who are bound to the dust will fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They, they shall come and make, make known to the people of the Lord, Lord, Lord the saving peace that he has just done. reading from Hebrews. Since this is the covenant, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confessions, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we do have one who, in every respect, has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he who was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
congregation may stand for the entire passion, but may also be seated for the first part. If you choose to be seated now, I will let you know when it is appropriate to stand, if you are able. For the reading of the Passion, your customary responses before and after the Gospel are omitted. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place there where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met them there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers, together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. <clears throat> Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of them, those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer and the Jewish police, arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were warming themselves around it. Peter was also standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby Jesus struck him on the face saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him to Caiaphas, to the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed.
stuck on my glasses. <clears throat> For the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about and meditating on this first part of today's gospel. It's been such a blessing to me. The reading begins with Jesus' arrest by the religious leaders and ends when he is taken before the high priest. Throughout, Peter is present nearby to Jesus. I love stories about Peter because he is so human. His foibles make me smile in recognition of my own and all of our humanness. Like him, we have good intentions and are prone to failing. Peter tries to be an enthusiastic witness, follower, and supporter of Jesus, but often messes up. In this crisis, he denies even knowing Jesus, but Jesus never deserts or stops loving Peter. In his zeal for Christ, Peter goes from one extreme to the other. When Jesus wants to wash Peter's feet at the Last Supper, Peter says, never. But when Jesus says he must wash, wash Peter's feet or he'll have no part of his Savior, he goes overboard no pun intended, wanting Jesus to wash him completely. I imagine Jesus just shaking his head. Later in the garden, he wants to follow Jesus, but Jesus protects him and the other disciples while accepting God's will that he be sacrificed to atone for the sins of all. Jesus had earlier predicted, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but I will follow you later but you will follow later. Jesus had faith in Peter, and he does in us. Peter does eventually follow Jesus in this world as a leader of the church, and then in death and entry into heaven. <clears throat> Peter often misunderstands. Trying to protect Jesus, he draws his sword and cuts off the slave's ear. But Jesus stops him. Jesus, know, Jesus knows that he needs to follow his path alone without misguided protection. Jesus fearlessly answers that he is the one they want to take into custody and to let the others go. When questioned by the high priest, he notes that he has continually shared his teaching openly in the synagogues and the temple. In contrast, Peter fearfully stays in the shadows and denies that he even knows Jesus. In this account, Peter is a foil to Jesus. Peter presents a contrast to Jesus, highlighting Jesus' character and obedience, even knowing that he will die painfully and alone. We are Peter, fully human. Jesus accepts, protects, and never gives up, gives up on us. We are, Peter, only understanding a little and misunderstanding a lot. Jesus loves us, sees our potential, and points the way to follow him in faith. Jesus prayed while Peter and others slept. I know I should pray more often. It would help me and draw me closer to God. Yet I falter. I want to follow Jesus, but I stumble. I want to speak up about my faith but I hesitate and stutter. I am afraid. I am so grateful for Jesus' example and for the unending love and presence of God for me, a stumbling human trying to find a path to dwell with God.
Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a, was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priests and police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered the headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. 
Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. I have always been fascinated by the role of Pilate in this gospel. We know from historical scholarship that Pilate was appointed governor by Emperor Tiberius, Judea being a conquered territory under the Roman Empire. His principal duties were maintaining a peacekeeping force, collecting taxes, minting coins, and settling judicial matters. Rome also permitted some local control over civil and religious issues, and I imagine Pilate kept a close eye on these. In this gospel, he seems like a pretty reasonable guy who really doesn't want to execute Jesus. How exactly Pilate handled Jesus' arrest is unknown. Some historians say he would have had Jesus executed immediately as a rebel. It is generally agreed that Pilate's hesitance in the role of the mob was later expanded to increase the culpability of the Jews, an interpretation that led to centuries of persecution and mass death. Regardless, the fact remains that Jesus died because of who he was and what he preached. His message was uncomfortable for those who opposed him. It was radical, and radical is to be feared. Love your enemies. Care for the sick, the lame, prisoners, lepers, and others labeled unclean. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger. Love your neighbor as yourself, no matter who he or she is. Welcome the tax collectors, prostitutes, oppressors, and foreigners. Women and children are worthy. No one is beyond God's love. These were revolutionary concepts in that era. Even today, we may say the words, but see very a little effect. Many who are sick are not cared for. Many do not have food, clothing, shelter, and are unwelcome in their own communities. Women, children, the elderly, the disabled, people of color, and non-binary sexuality are still abused persecuted, and demonized. Those in government who have something to do about it are still shrugging and saying, what is truth? People who claim to be religious are still quick to condemn and shout crucify. Perhaps this is why it's so important to relive Holy Week each year. Jesus spoke the truth and he told us that the truth shall set us free. The way to honor and remember his death is by taking up his banner and daring to speak radical truth. In the end, Pilate didn't kill Jesus. The Jews didn't kill Jesus. It was fear that killed Jesus. Amen.
So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among them, and for my clothing, they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. <clears throat> when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. From that day, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other one who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another piece of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloth according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Here ends the reading of the Passion.
Please be seated for a time of silent reflection.
your people of God. Our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and death, and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers, and the people whom they serve, for Prince, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized. That God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and people of the earth, and for those in authority among them. For Joseph, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, Kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger. That God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer. Let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecution of his disciples for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others. That God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, 
creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls. Have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have departed from this world and have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You are welcome to be seated. now participate in the devotions known as the veneration of the cross. We will read responsively the anthems that begin on page 281. If at any time during the anthem or in the silence that follows it, you would like to come up and bow before the cross, touch the cross, pray at the cross, you are welcome to do so, and when you're done, simply return to your seat. We glory in your cross, O oh Lord, and, and grace and glorify your, your holy, holy resurrection. resurrection. For, for, for the issue of your cross, joy, joy has come to the world. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your way be known upon the earth. Saving will help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. We glory in your cross, O Lord. And praise to glorify your holy resurrection. For the virtue of your cross, joy has come to the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.
O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us. Save us and help us. We want to beseech thee, O Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his black body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully, in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 
I'm sorry, you may need your book for the words of confession. Page 397. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life amen. amen let us now pray in the words our savior christ taught us our father, father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name thy, thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will be serving communion here. I'll be in the center and distribute the bread, and there will be, a, and then Pete and Pat will be on either side of me to distribute the wine. If you need a de-alcoholized wine or gluten-free bread, just let us know when you come forward. Our practice is to come up the center aisle and return by the side aisles.
We end this portion of our prayer of liturgy with the concluding prayer. This liturgy ends in silence and will continue tomorrow at noon with the Holy Saturday liturgy. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you 